we finishing with the interview, this part three. Uh, you were just telling us about the living condition, and we've been talking about visitation. You know, like you said, they want us to make these expensive phone calls, but our families can't afford it. Uh, they want to communicate through letters, but our families really don't have the time because they work and raise the family, take care of kids. Right. So they got time to come and visit, but now they want to cut the visits out for once a month. So they're doing everything they can to steal us off from society so that we can do just what you said. We can fall into the trap of institutionalization of our minds, and a man it becomes our wife. You know, homosexuality becomes our sexual outlet. Uh, uh, fuck talking and kicking and talk becomes a normal life. part of conversation. Yeah. And they just redefine our reality through these, through these things. And that's why the TV is for sports and the movies and not education because education makes you look outside of the box, look outside of the picture. And they're not promoting that. And that's what you were just describing. You've been describing, you know, what it's like seeing that stuff on a day-to-day basis and how it affects you because it affects me because, you know, you being... We can't we can't condemn homosexuality. These are these people's choices. But at the same time, we seeing a lot of people that's engaging in not because of, you know, this is their nature, this is what they do. They engage in because this is what this environment promotes and, and imposes on them and they just fall a victim to it. And so that's what's going on in the system and that's what we're trying to address. Well, how it affects me is it really don't because, you know, I got my own mind. You know, but now you can't condone. I'm I'm not condoning what the next man do with being person. If that's how they do their time, that's how they do their time. But now, you know, if you a person that's concerned, you can pull them to the side and be like, you know, this ain't what's up. You always got another chance, you know, get yourself together. But some people be so far gone, you just have to leave them out there like that. So what I do is I just try to self, you know, I separate myself. I like to try, I'm the type of person in life, I like to separate the faith from the fish, you know what I'm saying? And what I mean by that is, I just surround myself by as many positive people as, as I possibly can, and as many people as possible, you know what I'm saying? So, it gets messed up, and we need y'all to help us, you know, to try to eliminate some of this type of AC because some people are lost, but they don't got no support, they ain't got no family, they ain't got nobody to tell them I love you or I'm still by your side, or I'm always here to hear you out when you write or when you talk to me or call or whatever. You know, so it's messed up. You know? Okay, the door is over. We're trying to see who's coming in. Y'all know we've been in here for a long time. This is the third part of the interview. No officer came in, did no security check or not. So, you know, one of us, it, it's three of us in here. So if two of us had to kill the other one, they'd have been dead in, for a long time before anybody get around to coming in and see what's going on. And that's another thing, you know, I want you to speak on the violence that you see in the prison, the overall violence level, because I think dudes that got his throat cut over there on the block. So tell them about that and what you see day to day as far as violence, not just inmate on inmate, but also on own inmate too. Right. Okay, well, me, like I said, well, I just came to this count because I got a call on also, and before they pat me down, I told them, no, they grabbed me by my shirt for no reason. Well, I did like this and swipe the, the hand away, and they, they write me up for a thought on all of them. But that's just a small portion of it. That's not really nothing. I mean, you got inmates on all of them actually fighting head up. You got inmates that will stick off them. And then, you know, like outside of that, inmate to inmate, being at this max count that I'm at, you know, life based on respect, but, you know, it's very, it's, it's a real demandable respect will play here. And what I mean, if you did respect a person, rubbed in the wrong way, or did that, uh, you got to see two people sticking each other, one probably being killed. You know, last week, week before last, the dude just got his, his throat cut from his ear all the way to the other side. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a very violent, violent nature, you know, surrounding because it's going to be a fight or it's going to be a stab. You know what I'm saying? It's violent, though. And a, lot of, and a lot of the, the police don't even know about it. A lot of fights go on inside these cells right here. We got a problem. We go on the cell. We handle it. It's over with. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of violence. We ain't talking about just what's on record. You know, it's a lot of stuff that's not even on record that go on in prison. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, 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 there's nothing positive coming out of this system. You know, we in here with a toilet right now that two other men use uh, defecating and urinating in every day. And we in here, they got their shoes in here that they run around in the yard and stuff in. They got their dirty clothes that's piled up in this cell. 
you know, and two human bodies. I mean, how much, how much, how much more do they want to pack up in here? You know what I'm saying? The, the vents and stuff are filthy. The cells ain't hardly never painted. And you know, we just trying to figure out, you know, when is it? When is when do we reach a point where we don't want to take it no more? And that's what caused the Alabama movement to come into existence. So, uh. Uh, any parting words you want to share something with the people, share something with your family, community, let them know, you know, you're not a lost child, and when you come back, you're going to have something positive to offer to the community. Yeah, I want to say that, yeah, you know, everybody made mistakes in life, ain't nobody perfect, and, you know, a lot of people blame things on the way they came up, or this, that, and the other, but now I used to use that for an excuse, but the thing about it is, once you get to a certain point in your life, a certain age and mature. You got sense enough to change what you came from because you can came over a certain way. But once you get old enough to make a difference within yourself, you know what I'm saying, you can live a certain way. But you, as you being accustomed to something so long, you know, it'd it be hard to grasp that part of your life. And, you know, right now I'm 33 years old, and I done came to the point that, yeah, I done came more around a lot of abuse, a lot of drinking, drug activity, shooting, you know what I'm saying, gang activity, you know, I done been shot. I done shot people, I done seen people get killed, all type of stuff. So, you know, I can go on and continue living that life because that's what I know. But now that I know better, and I done been through a lot of life that has showed me that it's consequences the things you do, I know that I want to make a change within myself. And, you know, I just ask that if y'all got anybody that's willing to make a change or y'all see that's trying to change, be willing to get up and hit the hand the best way you can because I understand that. All of us in here populating the prison is overcrowded. We somebody's child. We might be some kids, daddies. We got wives out there. You know, we people that have been through something, they can teach the people that haven't been through what we've been through before they even get right here. You know what I'm saying? So, really, we the ones that the system trying to keep out the street, but we the ones that all need on the street because we the ones that can make a change in the community. And, and, and steer the ones that are going through this stuff the right way from our experience and keep them from coming to this environment. So it's more than one way to look at a bad situation. So just because we in prison and we can did bad things don't mean we bad guys. We just made mistakes that we learned from, you know. So if you got somebody that y'all see that's willing and trying to make the change, support us in that move. You know what I'm saying? Free Alabama. You know, and also spell out the word fam. You know, we're trying to free our down so we can get back to our family. That's why our family can get back to us. Because you got some of us in here alone. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I just thank God for having people support me. Thank God for a strong, sound mind. And I thank God for the parts around that I'm able to set myself around. So, you know, I'm ready to free out of move to the footage. And I just want y'all to do the same thing. That's it for um, Free Alabama Punch. I appreciate you sharing your story and your time, man, and your resources. Uh, I know you tell your mom and auntie going to be on board with us. Right. People that, you know, love them and support them going to be right there with us. So the movement continuing to grow, man. Uh, we ain't going nowhere. We ain't backing down. We ain't afraid. You know, that's why we putting our voices out there, putting our faces, our names out there, because we are tired. You know, you can't tell somebody that you're tired of something and be scared to let them know who the person is that's tired. Melvin Ray is tired. You know, Pancho tired. Right. And a lot of more people are tired. And all of us are joining together to do something about the system that we tired of. Uh, Y'all know we got a fundraiser going on. Uh, the website is in the process of being developed right now. I got a web developer. He's working on it. Uh, the book is in the process of being edited. Uh, that'll be done uh, hopefully over the weekend. Um, the t-shirts are already available. They for sale. You know, we're going to sell them in a package, sell them individually, whatever we have to do. Uh, the trademark application has been submitted. So we're getting all we're getting all our ducks in a row, doing everything we can. I'm going to continue with these interviews, uh, continue to let people tell their stories so that y'all know that uh, Free Alabama Movement is for real. It's not a joke. Uh, we're not manipulating anybody. We're not trying to uh, scam or beat the system. We just saying that if you don't have a system to rehabilitate us, then we in the wrong place. You know, and if it's gonna cost money to rehabilitate us and y'all have to let some people go, then that's y'all problem because y'all supposed to be about rehabilitation in the first place. And it's not about that. You know, it's about money. And the only people everybody making money off of the system except for us. But we doing labor too. And we wanna be compensated for our labor. And we don't wanna to have to come off of a job and go and share space with another human being. 
toilet, rats and roaches and spiders mm-hmm. and all the other things that we have to deal with just got to be cleaned up. And so that's why we're taking our labor off of the market. Uh, tentatively, January 4th, 2014, the march was, uh, the uh, Free Alabama movement will kick off in its official stages. And at that time, we're going to start mass recruiting at West Devon, St. Cloud, Holman, Tuckwild, and Bill to shut this system down. You know, that's what's going on with Free Alabama movement. So uh, all our supporters, people, love us. You know, get ready. The time is near. You know, Free Alabama. Peace.